Hello everyone, this is Java Monk, and welcome to the 20th episode of my survival series. I think it's the 20th. Yowza. So, if if all the scheduling has been correct, this, this episode is coming out on the second week that I'm going to be not able to record or respond to comments. So, I'll explain why on the last week when I actually return from that little little break there. So in this episode, we're going to do a few small projects. I know, kind of, kind of unusual, but we have a lot of things that are just long-standing that need to get done. For example, a flower farm, a cactus farm, a sugarcane farm, an actual automatic pumpkin and melon farm, those sorts of things. So I think the first thing we should do is a flower farm. So here I am in the mansion next to the illager, illager chamber, the cow farm, and the front entrance, which I broke a little entrance, broke a little doorway in here, so I can easily get access to the flower farm. So in this tiny little area, we're going to put in a flower farm for two block tall flowers. I'm going to be using a mechanic that it's fairly well known. So if you apply bone meal to a two block tall flower, then that two block tall flower will drop itself and it, it will actually it'll essentially clone. It will clone itself. So that is the mechanic that I'm going to take advantage of with this farm. And since I built a skeleton farm a couple episodes back, might as well use the bone meal from it. So let's see. There's four of the f two block tall plants, or flowers. And then I can just place in some gold here, place in some redstone. And so I can fill up these dispensers with bone meal later, but this one can have peonies, which produce pink dye. We have roses, which produce red dye got lilacs, which produce magenta dye, and sunflowers, which will go over here. In fact, let me put the lilacs over here. There'll be sunflowers over here, which I have not gathered yet, because those only show up in sunflower plains biomes. Okay, so I got a bit of redstone going up and over the flower here, because I didn't want to cut into the wall here. Let's see, so now what we need is a fast pulsing circuit. So to do that, am I too close? No. I think I'm just gonna do one of these pretty, pretty basic, basic circuits. A bis it's called a burnout clock, and that's because it it is based on the torch torches burning out and then and then updating and then burning out again. So it creates this ridiculously fast clock, which I built too close to the flowers. Let me just do that. There we go. So, here we go, place in a bit, bit of there, there we go. And now, to make sure this, is, this doesn't drive my viewers and myself nuts, there's a lever, and it's off. So now I can just fill these up with bone meal, and get however many flowers as I put in bone meal. Sweet. Small project, complete. And the chicken farm is clogged again. I really need to put in a better, better chicken dispensing system. So the next project that I'm going to do while I'm turning down the volume on these things, there we go. Turn, I turned it down from the recording software. So the next project is based on the green stuff that I'm holding in my that I have in my hotbar, cacti. I could probably use a I could use a cactus farm. So I've been collecting cacti from several deserts that I visited, but if I really wanted want large amounts of green dye, I'm gonna need way more than 29 cacti. So that is exactly what I'm going to gather is 
and actually, that's exactly what I'm going to build, is a cactus farm so that I actually can get way more than the 29 cacti that I have. Oop. Okay. So, this dispenser is pretty much full. I really need to put in a better dispensing system here. And I'm stuck. So I was wandering around the mansion looking for a looking for a spot where I actually labeled where I would put a cactus farm. Found that I didn't actually label a room to put one. So then I stumbled upon this room. So this room doesn't actually have a label on it. And it's because at the time that I was putting this, I actually forgot to label this room. So we're going to take advantage of that and build a cactus farm in here. So let me real quick clear out all the stuff that came with the mansion, and that way we can make space for a cactus farm. Lots of dark oak saplings. It's really cool. So this cactus farm here works in a pretty simple way, and I, I found this from watching Mumbo Jumbo's videos so that's one YouTuber that I like to watch is Mumbo Jumbo, and he built this he he built these cactus farms that use just cacti, sand, and string. So pretty cool. Now if I pull out some blocks, it doesn't look like I have any any gold ones on hand, so I'll just use stone. So that's that's the cactus farm. That's the kind of cactus farm I'm going to build. Now the actual cactus items, I'm going to have water streams to push them towards one corner where I can collect them with some hoppers. And that will minimize the use of hoppers. And all the water will be on this on this side here. So the layer of string will start here. There we go. So let's see. The way this works is that the string, which is hard to, kind of hard to see, but string will hold up sand for some reason. And then I can just place a cactus on top of that. And now, to break the cactus, I have strain over here. So, cacti won't be able to grow on... Actually, hold on. Did I build that one? Let me check. I think you can actually place strain on the side of cactus. Yeah, I built that one. So, there we go. The strain goes on the side of the cactus, and the, ca the actual cactus item, once it grows, will be broken by this solid sand here which can be used to grow more cacti. And that that just continues up upwards and onwards. And then on the last layer, I can just place some sand right there. And that way the cactus will break and not gonna grow over into the ceiling here. There we go. And now I just repeat this and tile it until it fills the whole room and all the cacti will be falling into this little area here. Okay. The cactus farm is complete, and wow, that's a lot of cactus being made. So I put all the cacti in slices here to make sure that none of the... That way, it decreases the chance of the cacti getting getting destroyed by cacti next to them. So the sand that breaks the cacti as they grow, and items can fly out all over the place, and eventually they land in this water stream, which I can then pick up manually like this, or I can just pull out my hoppers, and start placing them in right here. So let's do that right now. Let's see, over here. Oh cool, the water doesn't flow there. That's good. So now I can just place a chest there, and I place that in the wrong place. It needs to be one block lower. Here we go. The Depth Strider enchantment is amazing. It's amazing for anything when working with water. Let's see, doop -a -doop -a -doop. and now the cactus farm is pretty much complete. As soon as I place in this last hopper, like that, there we go, and the cactus farm is complete. Nice. So now I can just come over here and collect collect the cacti. There we go, and there's there's still more coming through, so that's amazing. And that's working quite nicely. 
and I can just break this block here to make sure I can I don't get stuck in this chest. Although that is not actually gonna end up happening, so yeah, if I jump down here, I can just jump right up. Okay, so now I can just seal up this room, and because now there's really no point in me coming back here, except to collect the cacti. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm just gonna seal up the room and act like it doesn't exist anymore. Sweet. The room is now sealed. There, for all I know, there's nothing behind here. <clears throat> and the only clue that there's anything behind there is that there's a chest here with cacti magically flowing into it. So the other thing is, no hostile mobs will spawn in here, even if it's dark, because there's water. <clears throat> there's water on the floor, and mobs can't spawn on water. There's also cacti on top of the sand, and even though sand is a solid block that mobs can spawn on, mobs can't spawn on cacti. So nothing will spawn in that cactus room. Awesome. So with that project out of the way, I'm thinking we should do some reorganization of this mansion a little bit, like move some of this. I built this as kind of an afterthought, this rail duplicator, and it kind of looks ugly here. And it's completely impractical. So I'm going to move it where, to a place where I'm also going to be storing the rails. And no, I'm not going to be storing the rails duplicated over here. So let's find a place where we can store those rails. So here I am back in the flying machine for the, for the sky island up there. So <clears throat> this machine is quite loud and I recently did some pretty massive improvements. So I have a terracotta floor here now where I can just go up and get ready for the, get ready. And also I have a button right there that I can push to get the machine started. All right. Hey. So now that we're up here on this island that I built back in episode 13, wait, was it 13? I think it was 13. Yeah, so it seems to be perpetually raining on this island, but inside it here, I have storage for all the rails that I've been duplicating. And it seems to also store zombies. So I got activator rails in some of these, I got detector rails, I got the regular rails. And over here is where I'm going to relocate the TNT, not TNT, the rail duplicator. So I got all the materials to do so. Let's see. Should probably go up a little, like here. And this is this can be where the actual duplicator is. So this this rail duplicator is outrageously easy to build. Like seriously. That this is this is insane. It's it's really cheap too. So yeah, I discovered it from a video by OMG Craft. I think I've mentioned this before, but <clears throat> might as well mention it again. Uh, that's gonna cause problems. So yeah, and ever since then, I just decided to build it up in survival, duplicated a whole bunch of rails, and then I just went AFK for several hours, and I had inventories full of rails. So at that point, I decided that I'm just going to duplicate all the activator rail, activator detector, and regular rails that I need, all of which would require iron otherwise. But powered rails, there's really no point in duplicating because those need gold and redstone, both of which I have farms for now. So the witch farm produces plenty of redstone, not not yet anyways, I haven't turned it on, but it will soon produce plenty of redstone. And I already have a mega powerful gold farm, so there's really no point in duplicating powered rails. But activator rails, de detector rails, and the, the regular rails, those require iron. So might as well just duplicate them. So now I can just place the lever here and turn that off. That way it doesn't go breaking when I unload the chunks or whatever's going on with that. And so now, if I place an activator rail there, a normal rail there, and a detector rail here, they should now duplicate, just like that. Awesome! And it's in a nice contained area, so I can just 
run around like this and collect a whole ton of ales. Awesome, amazing, and it's right up in the storage for these all these rails. Awesome. So that's that's another minor project complete. That's been an annoyance for several several weeks now. So up since we're up in this island anyway, might as well do another small project related to the villagers. So up here, I've I've discussed plans on making a villager trading hall up in this island. I still intend on doing that, but I'm going to go with a I'm going to design my own villager trading hall. And in order for this for this design to work, I'd like to sort out all the villagers before I even before they even go into the trading hall. So that's what I'm going to do inside the inside the island. Let me just get back down to my mansion and get some resources. Oh, come on. And bam. So let's go back down to the mansion and collect some resources to build a villager sorter. Welcome back to, once again, my absolute disaster of a test world. So over here, I have a villager sorter. So by the way, if you want a world download of this of this world, or maybe even a tour in a separate video of this world, please let me know. I'd be happy to make one. So here is a villager sorter that I designed pretty much entirely on my own. In fact, entirely on my own. I tried to make it as compact as possible. So what I have over here is a selector panel for what kind of villager is going to the system. So now if I bring a get a minecart and a villager, which is how these villagers are going to go up to the island anyway, they're going to be in minecarts. So put him in a minecart, drops into the chamber here. And now I have this con this selector over here. So I'll be able to see what the villager is and he's a librarian, so I want to keep him. And off he goes on whatever track I have here. So now, here's another librarian here. Ta-da! So we got we got random spawn eggs. This, however, is a blacksmith of some kind. So I don't really feel like I don't really feel like trading with those. So that's actually one that's actually one of the ones that I didn't didn't add to the selector panel. Although it is expandable, and I can rearrange the panel depending on whether I want these villagers or not. But say that guy, pretend that guy had a green coat on, he's nitwit, pretend. So I'd click this button, and so rather than going into the trading hall, he dropped to the floor. And over here, I'm going to have some sort of collection chamber. So any, I'm still going to keep the villagers. They are going to be for different purposes other than trading. So yeah, that's, that's how this villager sort of works. And this is what I'm going to build inside the island on the survival series. So the basic, this is essentially all the redstone. The select a panel, depending on what I choose, will select, will make this system go off or the slime block. So if I push a button that says that I want this villager, then this slime block will push the villager onto the rail, off the off this terracotta onto the rail, and will go on his journey, on a merry little journey to the trading hall. If, however, I don't want the villager, then it will go through this system here, which essentially powers this piston briefly, moving this open fence gate into this position here. The villager will then fall through, and then a little bit later, this this redstone will activate, pushing this piston to here. That ideally would happen, except pistons have very weird mechanics. So what I had to put in was this tripwire to say that yes, indeed, a villager did come through. I essentially needed to update this piston, and I couldn't do that very well in a compact way. So I have this system here to detect the fact that, hey, a villager just dropped through. So that updates this piston, going, hey, I need to extend, 
boop, there it goes. Yowza. So, this took, it seems to be, it's a pretty simple system, but it took a quite a while to figure out what's going on, and this particular piston was giving me a whole lot of trouble. But, it is now ready to be built in survival. So let's just gather all the, gather up all the materials needed, and let's get building. So, I just gathered up all the materials, and I still somehow have an overabundance of glazed terracotta. Which I still gotta use up, somewhere. Especially this magenta. So I'm thinking of using the black terracotta for some other, some decorative build. But, I'll use the magenta terracotta for this. For all the parts that need the terracotta. The glazed one. I think we got, I think this is all covered. All my... Redstone supplies are in this ender chest. I cannot wait until I get shulker boxes, because then I can just carry around a shulker box full of anything redstone related that I need. Which I need quite a lot. I love redstone. I love working with it. So, on every single time I take one of these trips, I gather, I grab more rails out of the, out of the chest, out of the storage of rails that I have in the mansion. Let me just grab some cobblestone here. So I still have leftover rails in here that I have not pulled out yet. So I got all these detector and activator rails. And now I can also break this chest, these, this chest, and grab the other rails in here. So little by little, I'm just taking out the... I'm taking out these chests, and pretty soon there shouldn't be a hole in the floor for and all the rails will be duplicated and stored up in the island up there. Let me just put this back. I'm probably going to need it. Alright, I'll get back to you when I've made a bit of progress on this. So, since it's so dark in this, in the middle of this island here, I figured might as well give my, get some night vision going here. So I have a photo of, a screenshot of the contraption that I built. So, now I'm trying to follow the screenshot, and while I'm doing that, I came across the realization that I think this is the first kind of major redstone, redstone contraption that I designed myself. So, this is quite, quite interesting, especially since I work with redstone quite a bit. I love the stuff. So... One reason why I really like redstone is because it allows me to create these these sorts of contraptions that just make my job easier, make make different tasks easier, and generally the automation aspect of of redstone it it intrigues me. I like it a lot. So yeah, the redstone is a lot like the electricity in a lot like electricity in real life. I mean. And the, not in the way that it works, but certainly in the in the stuff that it can do. So, yeah, I'm just gonna gonna keep on working. And one thing I forgot to bring with me is slabs. So might as well make my own. Here we go. Now I have slabs. So I'm just gonna keep doing this until the contraption's built up, or I come across some sort of weird thing. Or something interesting happens. This episode's been been kind of short, and there's a reason for that. I explained this last episode. I'm gonna, I'm not gonna be able to respond to comments pretty soon, and I'm also not gonna be able to record. So I'm pre-recording a couple. I'm pre-recording a whole bunch of episodes, so that way episodes can still come out, and there shouldn't be too much of a too many problems with that. Alright. Well, that sucks. I built this several blocks too high. Dang it. And with the night vision wearing off, I might as well give you a little update on what's been going on. So, here's all the progress I've made so far. I'm going nice and slow at this because, well, building... Building with redstone in survival is completely different from building in creative mode. So, in fact, in survival mode, it's much more difficult. 
So, yeah, I had to move this whole thing down several blocks because I built it too high. And I wouldn't have space for, for an actual loading system into this machine, into this contraption. So, whoops. The other thing is, you end up having you end up having to deal with uh, piston tilts, and it's much more annoying to deal with that kind of thing, especially in a con in a super compact contraption such as this one. Plus, you haven't plus you have materials that you had, actually have to gather. So, in a lot of ways, building in building redstone in survival is way more annoying than building in creative, but that's fine. It's still fun. So let's see over here. I'm as this for the selector panel. I am using cauldrons to actually determine what is being selected. So these cauldrons have to all be filled up with water, which is another thing I forgot to bring and have no access to up here in the Sky Island. So for now, I'm just going to call this the Sky Island until somebody comes up with a better name for this or until I decide to build and build more of these islands in which case it's going this one's going to need a different name so let's see still got the panel to build and I still got to build the shifting floor mechanism here well, it's actually not shifting floors but the the mechanism to actually drop the villager through the floor. So we got a lot of work. The contraption is now built, so what I need now is to fill up these cauldrons with water. Now I don't have access to water up here in the, in the island, so that's why I brought ice up here, and what I'm going to do is right down here, I'm just going to create a little pool, an infinity pool. So now I can just grab some water from here, from the bottom of the island, and now I have access to water. So now I can just bring this up one bucket at a time up to the cauldrons. I suppose there's no need for blocks to be under the... no, that block shouldn't have broken that block. Whoops. Better get up there and fix it. So now what I, what I need to do is this important? No. So, now what I need to do is test it and make sure that this works before I before I start sending up villagers up here. Now, how am I going to get there? Get to the tripwire. There. So, still got a lot of work ahead of me. There we go. That's done. So now I can break this block and swap out the cauldron. And time to fill this up one bucket at a time. So there we go. This villager sorter is now complete and it should work. So let me just break up all these pillars. Once I fill up all the cauldrons, then it should work just fine. So when I finish filling up the cauldrons and we can test it out with just plain empty minecarts. So, yeah. Okay, the shoot is now in, and it is time to test this. So I'm just going to be testing it with empty minecarts. No villagers in them whatsoever. Now, assuming I can actually get them into the hole. Dang it. Okay. So let's get them into the hole here. There we go. So minecarts just dropped in, and now... The selector panel should work. So if I choose a button like a nitwit, so if I click the nitwit button, then it should drop the villa should drop the minecart to here. And if I drop a button from, from the farm or a librarian or something like that, then the the minecart should go over here. So let me test the I want this villager part first. There we go. Nice. Looks like it also speed out some dirt from when I was digging up the hole there. So now we can get back up onto the on top of the island and test out the 
I don't want this villager feature. Here we go. So this is the temporary temporary access to the to the villager sorter. Get in there. Ah, yikes. Uh, oops. I, I have an escape route here that only I can use. Yay. So let's see. Um, I need to get back up on top of the island there. So the reason, reason I still have that opening there is that way the villager doesn't get suffocated when it goes to the I want this villager line, the rail line. And plus, the villager won't be able to actually escape the the pod there using that because, well, that that pod is inescapable. You can't escape it when you're in a minecart. The fact that there's zombies still spawning down here is a really bad sign. It means that also creepers can spawn. Let's see now. So say I don't want this villager. Okay. Nice. Now, did it reset? I'm actually most nervous about this. It reset! Uh-oh. But, it worked! Hooray! It worked until I, until I swung my sword and broke it. Yay! Awesome! It works! So now I can send villagers through it, and I just need to put in the different rail lines to connect these two and the top up there. So, a very successful redstone project, and I think I'm going to end the episode right here. I haven't done any editing for this episode yet, so I'm not sure how, the, how long it's going to be. It's probably going to be quite short, but that's alright. A short episode, at, finally. So, I'm just going to go straight down in this elevator, and in this very, very loud elevator. So, I'd like to thank you all for watching, and I will see you next week with a new episode. Java Monk, out.